No, you don't need, you don't need a, the... I'm doing legend. Legend. He a legend, he a legend, he a legend. What's up, everybody? It's Peichel with League of Items. And uh, apparently, Piosik is a better jungler than Juhan. So last night, we had a big upset in the LCK with DRX winning 2-1. Uh, to one. Um, I didn't expect it because they haven't looked that good recently, and I was pretty frustrated with Juhan playing. Um... If you have a player of PO6 caliber on your team, I don't care what's happening in the future. I want my best team possible today, and their best team today was able to beat Damwon, and I think that's a pretty big win. It, it shows the ceiling um, of DRX, where I know it's just one one series, but uh, that's pretty big, um, a pretty big win, and it should make us more confident the next time they go up against T1 or DRX. Uh, so we'll be look or uh, Genji. So we'll be looking for those kinds of spots uh, in the future. Um, yesterday, I also said that it made a lot of sense to play um, on Prize Picks. You could justify playing all four from Genji and uh, Sandbox, and you you had Closer, Prince, Chovy, Ruler, and three out of the four I think hit in the first game, so before the second game was even played, and then, you know, they they crushed anyways, so uh, that one definitely hit if you were listening to me about that. Then in the DRX against Damwon series, game one, PO6, 6, 1, and 4 on the Lee Sin, the best player in of the game uh, for either team, and that's that shows the level that he can play to at different times. In the second draft, DRX, that's not a team composition that I really want to look at. Um, I don't want to have the Zaya Rakan against an Aphelios. It's interesting that we're seeing a lot of Zaya or a lot of Aphelios and Jinx kind of re-emerging. And what that tells me is that teams have been trying out a lot of different combinations. And because of the way pick bans have been going with the number of ADCs being banned out, uh, Jinx and um, Aphelios re remain two of the top AD carries that are out there. And it allows a lot of teams to play a style that they're used to so you know watch out for that it's going to be important for teams to kind of fall back into the play style that we had um during last split and on previous patches so that's good that's a very good thing for teams that you know were strong at the end of last year or at the end of the last split sorry um so then game two uh this is the kind of game that we're afraid of from dom Juan, so 10 to 1 um, low participation on top lane and AD carry, so that's a little sketchy sometimes. Then in game three, Piosik went off again, 7 2 and 15 on Lee Sin. And then we had Deft on Jinx, 7 3 and 12. So good job by DRX last night, big win for them. Uh, then we had Weibo win 2 to 1. Uh, we, kn we knew it was pretty, uh, pretty likely that Thunder Talk was going to take a game because that's just how Weibo kind of is. And then LNG was the biggest uh, disappointment of the night, not picking up a game against V5. So tomorrow we have we have uh, three matches in the LPL and the LCK. I retweeted the rosters, I believe, earlier. Uh, so first up, we have Invictus Gaming as a slight favorite over World Elite. Zika, Shun, Mole, An, and Wink against Biu Biu, Viu, Shie, Shing, and Heal. So they benched Beishong, or they want to see Viu for some reason. Beishong is a better player than Viu, at least from what we've seen on the stage. Maybe he's you know doing extremely well in scrims or something like that. That makes me want to play Invictus Gaming a lot, and it makes it more difficult for me to play World Elite as an underdog, because if they lose the first game, does Beishong come in? Uh, do some of the other players come in? Um, that can really screw up DraftKings lineups, so I'll be avoiding most of those players. I do like the idea of Zika tomorrow for DraftKings. I will be using him. I think I'm only playing one lineup tomorrow, uh, so I think I'll have him in my lineups. Then in Game 2, we have JDG against BLG. So BLG has obviously been 
a pretty big disappointment this split so far. They definitely have the ability to beat a team like JDG, but JDG is the team that I would want uh, to play for DraftKings. I think that it's more likely JDG is going to force the issue, be aggressive, and take kills from BLG as opposed to BLG really pressing the advantage if they're able to get one. It would still require JDG to be the team forcing action around the rift. Um, so I prefer JDG there. And then RNG against EDG. I I want to play EDG. I think that this is a good spot to go against RNG um, for, for DraftKings reasons. You know, it's tough. It's a really tough matchup, but it's going to get you pretty unique, I think, if you're utilizing EDG on this slate. Uh, tomorrow, but you need to be a little bit different. So, you know, JDG with EDG will be somewhat popular. So you have to find a way to get different. Um, but I'm on the EDG side there. Uh, I, st I still think, I just, I hate, I hate the play style that RNG uses where they feed Gala all of these kills. It's smart, I guess. Um, it's just unnecessary. You're already in a position where you're going to win, but you're also just feeding the ego of the AD carry. And I'm not saying that Gala has an ego. I don't know if he does or he does not. It's just it creates this insane um, situation where everybody thinks that Gala is the best AD carry in the world. And I just I just don't understand. Um, I just don't understand that uh, mentality. Because, I mean, Viper is just as good, if not better. Ruler is just as good, if not better. Um, so it's really, I guess, not super important. Maybe I shouldn't let it bother me, but it bothers me. Uh, then in the LCK, we have T1 against Fred at Brion. I think that T1 is the obvious play there. Uh, and then Nongshim against KT Rolster. I think I want to play Nongshim. Uh, th it's been brutal. They've been brutal all year. But these are the kinds of spots where you need to take shots, um, especially for DraftKings. I wouldn't recommend using their team slot. But if you want to do a short stack uh, from Nongshim, maybe we get Kana. Uh, at low ownership or something like that. Um, you know, if you want to stay away completely, totally understand. Uh, not easy to keep rostering them. Um, if you're going to play KT, I don't know. I, I just, I'm probably not playing KT tomorrow. It's not my kind of play. Let's take a look at the LEC. Uh, so, so far today, I've been dead wrong. Uh, SK Gaming uh, beat BDS, XL beat Misfits. Mad Lions beat Vitality, G2 beat Astralis, which is what I had, what I had, and then Rogue beat Fnatic, which is what I had. For the games tomorrow in the LEC, LEC, I think that Astralis against BDS, you should still be comfortable playing Astralis against BDS after their loss uh, against G2. Mad Lions against SK Gaming, I'm not going to pick SK Gaming to beat Mad Lions. I think that they're definitely capable of doing it. I think that they went 2-0 against them last split, um, so maybe it is a good spot something to dig into if you're looking for a contrarian play uh but it's tough for me to get there personally vitality against misfits i mean i i'm gonna stick with vitality uh you know somebody posted something the other day about Bo being um very Bo's doing very well on the uh european server supposedly i'm like well no no duh like he's a carry he's a chinese carry jungler he's gonna do well in solo queue Maybe they're going to bring him in soon. Um, I think that the ceiling is definitely higher with Bo than with somebody like Haru. Um, then we have uh, Rogue against G2. I'm on the Rogue side there. And then we have Fnatic against XL. And I'm on the XL side there. I think that XL has done enough to be thought of in the same breath as teams like Fnatic and G2 and Rogue. Uh, so maybe that's not a big enough number, but that's the side that I would want to be on, uh, just at a little higher number. So like, that's not a real life bet for me, but for DraftKings purposes, I could definitely see myself getting there. I haven't made any of those, any of those lineups yet, uh, today. Uh, then we have the LCS. So first up we have evil geniuses against CLG. I'm obviously on e uh, evil geniuses. I I'm always on evil geniuses. Team Liquid against Immortals, definitely on Team Liquid. TSM against 100 Thieves. This number is kind of surprising to me. I don't think that's what the public would think about this matchup. TSM has looked a little bit better uh, since they made 
those changes uh, last week. They had a pretty big upset win over FlyQuest, and then they're getting the same exact number, basically, or a very similar number against 100 Thieves. Um, they were plus 223 against C9 before that. So the minus 250 number is probably a good number for 100 Thieves. I guess it does seem about right. TSM would have to get... TSM would have to get... That seems like a fair number. I, I don't think that that's a bet. Um, but the fact I even the fact I even have to think about that shows, uh, you know, TSM is moving in the right direction in my mind. Uh, dig dig against C9. Definitely just gonna click C9 there, and then Golden Guardians against FlyQuest. I prefer FlyQuest. Um, just in general, I think they're a slightly better team, and they have a pretty good read on the meta. Um, and I like their eighty. I like their eighty carry better. Um, if it does turn into, uh, you know, Jinx of Felios, I think that's th they're just in a better spot from that perspective as well. Um, so that's basically it. There's no prize picks out yet. I have to leave my apartment. Um, so that's all you're getting today. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.